on ramp. We will be working on dojos and ninjas today with template. So we're taking it to that next level. So let's get a project going. I'll open up my terminal here. And let's slugging out on me. Okay, cool. Let me make it bigger for you guys. Go to my dojo directory, stacks, Python, where do I want to go? Assignments, we'll say. All right, um, now let's, we're going to create this project. What do we always have to do when we're creating a Django project? Got to activate our environment, right? So let's say source. I'm going to go up one level into my environments. And I've got my Django environment bin activate. Cool. Now let's uh, go ahead and create this project. So let's say Django admin start project. And we'll call this dojos ninjas template. Okay. Cool. So I've created my project. Now I just want to actually open this in VS Code so I can work on it, right? So we'll say code dojos ninjas template. Great. I'm going to close out this terminal over here. Now I've got this guy. <clears throat> All right, excellent. What's usually the next step after we've created a Django project? So we're going to make an actual app for it, right? Let me expand that a little bit. Now, again, I've opened up a new terminal in VS Code, which means that I don't have my environment activated. So let's activate it. We'll say source up a couple levels into my environments. Django bin activate. Okay. Excellent. How do I create a new app? No, not Django admin. That's only for starting the project, right? Yeah, we want to do Python manage.py, right? Django admin to actually start an app. Oh, sweet. All right, let's try this. You just blew my mind. <laughs> Django admin. Oops. Start app, right? And we'll just call this main. That's cool. Hey, what do you know, man? That is so awesome. All right. Cool. So we've got our main app. The other thing that we need to sometimes handle, well, actually, before we get there, is let's deal with our settings, right? So inside of our settings, we need to specify that we have this app and we're using it. So down here, installed apps. Let's just add main to this list. Good to go there. All right. Now, um, before we start building anything, maybe we should look at the requirements and see kind of what are, what are we working on, right? It's good to sort of take a breath and see what's going on here. Okay, so I've got this app that looks like a one pager. There's only going to be one template, so that part's kind of simple. And then I've got two forms on, over here. One is for adding a dojo. One is for adding a ninja. And then I've just got some information down here where it looks like we're looping through all of our dojos. And then as we loop through the dojos, it looks like we're going to be looping through people who belong to each one. Right? Yeah. So that kind of sounds like what? A loop within a loop. Right? Can we handle that? This would be so bad. Yeah, I think we can do it, right? Good deal. So let's let's uh, think real quick too about what is the relationship going to be between these two things. So I've got dojos, I've got ninjas. Well, let's keep it a little bit simpler than that. So a many to many would mean that you as a student could potentially belong to multiple dojos. Right. But that's not really true, right? You're only going to this program at one dojo, right? So you only belong to one. What's the one to many, though? One to many, right? So which one's the one? Dojo. Dojo, and then the many is going to be the ninja, right? Yeah, so the ninja will be the, the uh, many part. All right, cool. Now, when we have a one to many situation, where do we usually store information in the foreign key situation? So in our models, who gets the foreign key? 
parts of the menu? It's going to be in the menu. Yeah, we're going to have the foreign key in the menu, which in this case is going to be the ninja. Okay. Right? Okay, cool. So let's uh, let's play around with our models.py a little bit just to get a handle on this. Let's look at what we need to have. Is the foreign key always in the menu relationship? For a one to many, yeah. What about for many to many though? For many to many, it actually doesn't matter which one you've got the many to many field in. Uh -huh. And uh, we'll talk about that later on this afternoon if you guys want to come to Books and Authors. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but here for a dojo, I just need three things, right? I need the name, the city, and the state. So that's cool. So we can kind of get started on that. So let's open up our models.py here inside our main. Okay, and I'm going to create this class dojo. What's that going to inherit from? Models dot model. So this is the model class, right? Cool. Now I'm going to have these different fields. I'm going to have a name field. Okay. And what kind of uh, field should that be? Char field. Yeah, probably just a char field. We can specify some kind of a max length if we want. Okay. And then we've got a city which is going to be the same thing, models.charfield. All right. Maybe I'll make that short. Ooh, I didn't spell that right. Genius. Okay, so we'll make this a little bit shorter. We'll just say the city can, can be no more than 64 characters. State Okay, can be same thing. Oh, man. Spelling is taking a back seat today. So max <laughs> max length here would just be two, right? Because we'll just do state abbreviations. That'll make it nice and easy. Cool. And then I probably want some timestamps. That's pretty standard, right? We want our created at and our updated at. All righty. Good. So next we want to create our ninja class, right? So let's say class ninja. Again, we're inheriting from this same class, this models.model. Okay, and then the ninja, I'm going to have a first name, a last name, and then a dojo. Cool. All right. So let's do first name, models.charfield, max length, five. Okay, and then I'll just duplicate that down. So if you guys um, haven't played with that yet, on a Mac, it's going to be Alt Shift and then your down arrow. On Windows, it should be same thing, it's like right? Alt shift yeah, Alt down. Shift and then down. Yeah, same exact thing. Cool. All right. Um, now we just need to deal with this Dojo part, right? So let's say Dojo. Actually, hold on. Let me put in the timestamps first, and then we'll come back to that. I'm going to kind of separate it here just to sort of give myself some mental space and know that, ah, this is a special relationship that's okay. about to come. All right. So I'm going to have this field in here called Dojo. <clears throat> and what kind of field is that going to be? Foreign. It's going to be a foreign key, right? Models dot foreign key. Okay. And then what am I going to pass into this? You can see that I'm creating an instance of the foreign key class, right? So we want to pass in there. We want to create, we want to pass in the dojo class. And related name. <clears throat> related name. Good. What do you guys think we want to say for related name? Yeah, that's where I was, I was getting confused on was what exactly do you want to put in related name? Mm -hmm. Like what are you passing to that? So let's talk about what it actually does. So related name is going to give us <clears throat> an extra field on this dojo class up here. So that I can go and get all of my ninjas From the just in one shot. Yeah. So I like to make it <clears throat> very descriptive about what it is. It's just going to be all the ninjas. So we can just call it ninjas, right? That way, once we're dealing with a specific dojo, I can say, let's say I had a, a, a variable called this underscore dojos. I can say this underscore dojos dot ninjas dot all to get all the ninjas that are associated. Mind blown? No, I, just, I put the opposite. I put dojos. Right. So it's like the concept of 
So you. remember, the related name is what's going to be helping us with the, the other, other class, class, not this one. Not this one. Okay. And then um, we always need to do. Quick question, Mark. Or not quick question. Uh, you have the first names instead of the first and last names. Oh, yeah. Nice sketch. Thank you very much. So for our on delete argument, what are we going to pass for that? Models.cascade, models yeah, meaning that if I deleted a dojo, all the ninjas that were connected to that should be wiped away as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Oops. Cascade. OK. Good. That's pretty much all we need, right? I mean, it's, you've got two classes, one relationship between them. I don't think that there's anything we missed there. Pretty good, right? Okay, cool. So now we, once we've made some changes to our models.py, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to make our migrations. Good. Can I use Django admin for this too? No, this is the only one I use platform. You got to do manage.py. All right. Manage.py, make migrations. Okay, so we made our migrations. Excellent. So now let's do migrate itself. Okay, we're all done, so we migrated. And if we want to open this up in using that extension, we could do that. So just choose the database down there, go down to SQLite Explorer, open it up, and you can see that in my ninja table, I've got nothing right now, and in my dojo table, I've got nothing, so that's fine. All right, good deal. So now let's, let's start to get our app working so that we can interact with this on screen. All right, we're only going to have that one view, so it should make things fairly, fairly simple. The main part that we need to handle is typically going to be in our URLs.py, right? All right. So the way that the, I know they're teaching you guys uh, with OnRamp is that you really only have one URLs.py file, so I'm going I'm to stick with that for this one. Um, I do it my way. You do it my way? There's nothing wrong with that. If you it, like, if it makes sense to you and it's not confusing you, then go ahead and continue. Well, the uh, well yesterday I accidentally mixed something up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was trying to import something from Maine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to be careful with that. Okay. All right, so we've got this path here. And uh, what we want to do, I'm just going to comment this out because we're not using the admin app. So I'm going to say the path, and we'll just say, say f an empty string. I think that's what the route is, right? Yeah. So you've got an empty string right there is going to be where we're going to be showing our page. All right. And then here, what am I going to pass as the... So with our URL patterns, we have the first part is the actual URL pattern itself. The second part is going to be the function handler that does something, right? Okay. Use dot something again. Okay. Use dot something. Do I have a reference to this variable called views? No. No, I don't, right? So what do we need to do? We need to import views. Okay. Where are we going to get it from? main import views. Okay. Any questions about that part? Is there something else we need to add a path to the path to include? There would have been if we were doing two URLs.py. In this case, we're just going to do one, okay. so no, we don't need it. Okay. Yeah. So when we say we're, we're getting it from main, that means we're going into this main folder and then getting the views.py, right? All right. So that's where they're coming from. Um, let's actually put something in our, our uh, views.py so that we have this index function, right? So let's say def index is going to take in the request. Okay. And then I'm just going to render out a page for now. Nothing special in there. So we have to pass in the request and then the actual name of the page. It's just going to be index.html. Okay. 
Let's go and create a templates folder inside of our main app because we don't have that yet. Templates. Okay, and then I'm just going to create this index.html. Let's fill it out with some stuff. And then I'll just put hello from Dojo's Ninjas. Oh, Ninjas. Okay, so that should be good. So our urls.py is going to route to this specific function, and then when we get to that function, all we're doing for now is we're just going to render this page here. Just a question. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, and um, the URL, URLs.py, if we do it your way, um, it would be include main. Yeah, so, of, so okay. if we were doing it with two urls.py, we would also include the include, include function. And then for the path, instead of the views.index, we would, would we would invoke the include function here, okay, and, then and then inside then there we would say our main main.urls, okay. right? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we should be good enough to actually just render out a page. Let's see if we can render our server. So we'll say python manage.py run server. Oh no, that port's already in use. Where was I using it? <clears throat> Probably in this validations demo. Let's see here. Stop that guy. Whoa. Okay, cool. So let's go back to where we were. Okay. Try it one more time. Great. Now we can uh, just load up the page. Localhost 8000. Hello from Dojo's Ninjas. Awesome. So now let's start uh, getting some stuff going. We need, we know we need to have a couple forms here, right? Add a ninja or add a dojo, add a ninja. Let's get that first form to add a dojo. Okay. <clears throat> Let me close out a couple of these files. So we don't need URLs.py. Probably don't need models.py unless something comes up. We need to adjust it. I'm gonna close up settings as well. <clears throat> it's always good to kind of keep your workspace simplified so you don't have all kinds of files flying, on, flying everywhere. <clears throat> now, let's create our form to actually take in a new dojo. So we'll say form. What is our action going to be? Yeah, no, that's fine. Let's make it nice and descriptive, right? Let's say add dojo, okay? And what does the action mean, guys? Nick, what do we mean when we say action here, action attribute? Um, pretty much to relay it back to the database. Quite. I mean, ultimately, that's kind of what we're going to try to do, but, but what is this saying? Ashton. Okay, but the first step, when that form is submitted, where is it going to be submitted to? Yeah, I'm hearing all kinds of different things here. What do you think, Daniel? Um, just making it go taking our input and it is feeding it into a class. I'm not sure how to write that. Jessica, I know you know this. <laughs> it's, Come on, it's Jessica. It's where you want it to be routed? Yes. This is our routing, right? It's saying, I want this form to be submitted to this route, to a forward slash add dojo route. So like Very good. Have to pass that then, yeah, this is essentially the path. Where is this form going to be submitted? Okay. Now the action or the uh, method that we typically use is post. Okay, we're going to make a specific kind of request, a post request. Okay, and since I've created a form, what's the thing that I always need to include in my forms when I'm dealing with Django? CRF CSRF token. Right. So, yes. Uh, it was close enough. It was, yeah, you were on the right track there. 
All right, so I'm going to put that token in there, and then let's create some uh, inputs here. So we'll say input. Now, some of you guys have probably noticed I'm using some user snippets that I've created for a, for HTML. So that, that won't necessarily work for you if you start typing an input group. But anyway, um, so name, name. And then we'll have another one, which is going to be city, city. And then finally, oops, we're going to have state, state. OK. Down here, we want to have a little button where we can actually submit this form. Okay, and if I re-render the page, I should be seeing my form now, so that's excellent. Now, currently, I don't have a route handling the add, add dojo uh, path, so we need to add that, right? Because otherwise, if I get there, I'm just going to see that nasty yellow page telling me there's no page here. Okay, so first, I propose let's just create the logic to create a dojo first off, right? So I'm going to call this function add dojo to make it nice and clear what's going on. We're going to take in the request. All right. So if I want to add a dojo here, what am I going to need to have reference to in this file? No. So the only time we ever really reference our HTML is when we're rendering a template, right? Mm -hmm. Are we going to render anything when we're creating a Doja? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We need our Dojo model, right? That's how we're going to we're going to be able to say dojo.objects.create. Exactly. Cool. So let's import it, right? We'll go up here and we'll say from dot models import dojo. I also know that later on we're going to need to import ninja too, so let's just import it at the same time. That's cool. So now how am I going to create this dojo? New. Yeah, so we're going to say dojo.objects.create, right? And I'm thinking maybe we'll valid we'll add some validations to when we're creating ninjas, just to make it a little bit more. We'll kind of ramp up the difficulty slightly. Okay. All right. So we're going to create a dojo, and then inside there, what am I going? What arguments am I going to pass? The name. Yep. So name is going to equal what? Where am I getting the name information from? No. The form was just submitted. Oh, the, the, the users are the ninjas themselves. So yeah. Where's it coming from? I'm cheating. You're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of look too. That's why I said, come on. Stop so remember, I just submitted a form. Where am I going to get that form data from? You guys remember? I'm responding to a form submission here. How about this? How about request.post? Right? Okay. Same thing with um, the other fields that I need, right? I need the city. So request.post, city. Okay, and then finally we've got state. All right, so assuming that this all went fine, um, we're going to make that assumption here. Sometimes something could go wrong. Um, we're just going to redirect, right? Where do we want to redirect to? Back to the index. Back to the index, because remember, in this app, we only have one page. So let's say return, redirect, back to the index. Now notice here that I've got a little squiggly line underneath redirect. Why do you guys think that that's happened? 
you haven't um, imported it yet? I haven't imported that function. So I need to go up here and import that from Django shortcuts. Okay, so we're good there. Now we have our function to handle it. We also still need to add it to our URLs.py though, right? So let's do that. Let's go into our URLs.py and the route that I want again is going to be add dojo. Okay, and then the function that we want to be connected with that is going to be also called add dojo. So I kind of did that on purpose so that our route would match the name of the function so that we don't get confused about anything. All right, let's see if we can add some dojos. So I'll go back here and let's say this is Burbank. Or actually, sometimes they call it the Los Angeles one, even though, you know, we're not, we're not in LA. Page not found? Didn't I just add the URL for that? Oh, oh shoot, I put a forward slash in front of it. Don't ever do that. Oh, you're not? <laughs> yeah, watch out for that. Yeah, so your paths should actually have nothing in front of them. Okay. All right, so that's slightly confusing. So let me go back and try to do that one more time. Okay, so theoretically we added a dojo now. Nothing showed up on the page, but that's all right. I can go check in my little um, SQLite Explorer and see if we've got something in there. So let's go down to main dojo. Okay, and there we go. We've got Los Angeles, Burbank, right? Timestamps, everything we're expecting, so that's cool. Question. Yeah. What did you name your, your template? I just called it index.html. Oh, okay, the views.addDojo, that's, okay, that's the uh, function. That's so the this method. is the function that's yeah. going to be called whenever we hit this route right here, right? That URL. All right, so now I think what we want to do, since we've successfully created one, um, rather than just creating a bunch more, I want them to actually appear on the page so that we can see these are the ones that we've created already, right? Now, if I glance at the at the wireframe here, it looks like they want me to have some kind of an or looks kind of like an unordered list, right? Well, it's an unordered list that has elements inside of it as well, so it's like a nested list sort of thing. All right. So now let's talk about how we can get this to the page. So if I'm looking at my views.py, and we're going to be working on this index function, because that's the one that's rendering out this index page, how am I going to be able to provide all my dojos to that page? Ashton, you should know this, because you were saying this about something else, or you were, you were guessing it. Context. context. Okay. Right? That's where context Alright, this is where it comes into play, right? So we'll say context equals this dictionary. Okay, and then inside this dictionary, I'm going to create a key. The name of that key will be the, the way in which I'll reference it inside the template. So I'll say dojos, and then how am I going to get all of my dojos? Phones? Not show, right? I mean, we're not dealing with shows. I think maybe you're thinking of yesterday's restful, semi-restful. So what is it going to be, Nick? Request our phones? No. No. Now, how am I going to get, get all my dojos? These are in the database. Oh, so They're not get. coming from... Um, yeah. Dojos.object.get? Dot .get would be if I was trying to get one specific dot dojo. All. Yeah, I'm just trying to get all of them. So let's do dot .all, right? Okay. Say dojo dot objects dot all. Okay, good deal. Now I need to make sure to add this as the third argument when I'm rendering out a template so that it will have that context. All right, context. Excellent. Now let's go back to our index.html and actually put that in there. So underneath these forms is where we're going to have this list. 
I'm just going to create an unordered list with a single list item inside of it for now. And then, um, so what we want to display, I think, is the name of the dojo, right? Or no, we're going to say something like this, ninjas at the what, whatever it's called, dojo. Okay. So let's put that, ninjas at the, I'll put something dojo. Cool. Now, how am I going to make this work? I want to loop through all of the dojos that I, that I just passed to the template. How do I do that? A for loop, yeah, right? So let's do, I think I've got a for loop for each Python. I created another little snippet for these loops too because I got tired of doing them. So now we can say something like for dojo in dojos, right? Then I can bring this little li up inside there so that for every dojo, I'm going to have a new li element, and then I'll have the information about that dojo, right? Now, how do I replace this something here with the actual name of the dojo? Is that where the double mustache That's where that comes into play, right? So let's get the double mustache going. And then inside that, what am I going to put? Okay, we're kind of getting somewhere. So dojo, remember, is a single object, but it's not the name of the dojo. So how do I get the name? Do we need the ID? No, we just want to see what its name is, right? So I want to say ninja is at the Los Angeles dojo. City. Hmm? City, right? No, I think we're going to use name here. Name, okay. Yeah. So let's say... Dojo dot name. Why am I saying dojo and not dojos? Sometimes this stuff trips people out or throws people off a little bit. Is it because you want a specific one? Because while we're looping, I have reference to one specific dojo, right? That's the one that I want to output the name from. Dojos is actually a list, so I don't want to try to get a name from a list. That's not going to work, right? Okay. Cool, so let's save this. Let's go back and render this thing and see if we're seeing the names on there. Okay, there we go. So we've got ninjas at the Los Angeles Dojo. All right, let's create another one. So let's say Seattle, which is also in Seattle, and that would be WA. Okay, ninjas at the Seattle Dojo. What else do we have? Yes, there is an Orange County one. Cool. So I think they usually call that OC, Orange County, CA. Okay, great. So now this is working exactly as we expect, right? We're looping through. We're showing all these dojos. The only thing that we don't have is we don't have any ninjas in there yet, but that's okay. All right. So let's create another form where we can actually create these ninjas, right? Go over here. I've got this form. Maybe I'll be lazy and just duplicate it. Be careful when you guys are uh, copying and pasting for a lot of reasons. <laughs> it could bite you. But let's, yeah, let's just be careful and make sure that we change everything that needs to be changed. So the add dojo route is going to be something different now, right? Add ninja. Okay, fair enough. We want first name this time, not just name. Last name. Whoops. Okay, then we got last name down here. Last name. Okay, and then finally we have this other thing that's a little bit different. It looks like we've got a drop down. Ooh, fancy. All right, let's see if we can make a drop down. So if I come over here, I'm just going to wipe this out real quick. We'll do a div 
that has inside of it still a label. Get rid of that. And we'll say this is Dojo, right? Now, what kind of element do I want to add if I want to drop down like this? Huh. Tricky. Anyone know? Yeah. Very good. Select. Okay, and then our name will be, I'm going to call this Dojo ID. Does anybody know why I might want to call it that? Oops. Can I get it from all the Dojo IDs? Yeah, exactly. Because, because basically what we're going to do is when a person's choosing a Dojo, we're, we only care about that Dojo's ID. I don't really care about its name or anything else about it. Um, because then when it gets back to our server, we're going to reference it by ID to specifically add this ninja to that dojo. Right? And if we did name, it wouldn't be hard to reference it. Yeah, name doesn't is not is is not how you'd want to do it because what if I had multiple dojos that actually had the same name? Now I'm not saying you would, but in other cases you might have like duplicate entries like that. And so ID is the best thing. We know ID is unique for each one, right? All right. So now I'm going to have some options here. Right? And what do I want the value? So actually, let's back up for a second. From this template, I'm already passing in all of the, uh, when we render it, we're already passing in all of the dojos, right? So I may want to loop through these guys when I'm, when I'm creating the options for that dropdown. Does that make sense? OK. So let's go in here. And then I'm going to do another loop. So we'll do for each Python that I've created. And so we'll say for dojo in dojos, same thing. And then I'm going to bring my option up in here. Okay. Now what's the val that I want to put inside here? How can I uniquely identify this dojo? It's ID, right? So I'm going to use my mustache tags and just output that in here. So we'll say dojo.id. Okay. And then in here, what do I want to appear inside the option tag so that a user sees something friendly? Like what am I what dojo am I adding? Yeah, we want the actual name of the dojo, right? Okay, so we'll just output that again with the double mustache tags, and we'll say dojo.name. Okay, you guys can also potentially have like a blank option up here if you wanted an empty one. So we would say if you put no value in it, that means it's just empty, and I could just say something like please select a dojo. Is that what they had in the template? Or yeah, they had select a dojo with some hyphens around it. So if we want to be true to that, we could just say select a dojo. Okay. Now let's go back to our page and re-render this guy. <laughs> our forms are stacked. Do you guys want to make them like next to each other? Does that matter to you? Inline block. Inline block. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I would. So let's just wrap. I'm going to wrap both of these forms in a div. Okay. I'm going to do Command Shift P, and then I'll type in wrap, and you can wrap with abbreviation. Yeah, kind of nice. Right. So for these forms, I'll just put um, some style tags up here, just keep it nice and simple. We'll say for form, we want the display to be inline block. Oh man, I don't want to do that. I want to do flex. You guys seen Flexbox at all? Yeah, maybe. All right, so let's just create a little class. We'll call it form container. And then I'll say display will be flex. And then justify content will be space between. All right, now down here, I need to apply that class to this wrapper. So I'll say class equals form container. All right, now let's see if we can get this guy. Oh, there we go. That's pretty nice. 
All right, cool. So that looks good. Let's see how our drop down is rendering. So it's showing us all of our names, and that's good. And then if I inspect these elements too, we should see that the IDs are coming in in the in the uh, value part, right? Yeah. So I've got my values for all the Dojo IDs, so that's nice. Cool. Now we need to um, build up the logic to actually handle that form submission, right? So let's go back to our views. And let's say we're going to add a ninja. So def add ninja. Okay, we'll take in the request again. Great. Now, instead of dojo.object.create, what am I going to say to create it a ninja? Ninja.objects.create. Okay. And then inside there, we're going to say the things that we need, right, which is first name. Where am I going to get the first name from? So request.post. Request.post. First name. Cool. I'll just duplicate this down. So last name. What's that duplicate function? Oh, so, so it's Alt-Shift and then the down arrow or up arrow if you want to duplicate upwards, yeah. Okay, I need a comma up in here. Whoops. Oh, jeez. That brought me to the next line. Okay, cool. So um, I've got first name and last name. Now I need to handle the dojo part, right? So I need to say, what dojo is this person going to belong to? What am I going to pass in here, do you guys think? No, we want to pass in the actual dojo, the actual dojo object. Not the name. What is our form giving us? The value is going to be the dojo's ID, right? But I need to use that to actually retrieve the dojo from my database, right? You guys remember how to do that? All right. So let's just do it up here. We'll say, I'm going to say selected dojo equals dojo.objects.get. Okay? And I'm going to specify the ID. Where am I getting the ID from? From right here. It's coming from this particular form element that has a name of Dojo ID, right? All right. So let's go back to our request dot dot post, and then we'll say in brackets Dojo ID. So that's the selected dojo. That's the one that they want to be added to. Okay. Now I can say dojo equals selected dojo because I went and retrieved the one that I wanted. Does that make sense? Selected dojo. Oh, I still need a comma over here though. Okay. Now what do we want to do um, once we're done processing this form? Not going to render typically on a post request, right? We want to redirect. We're going to redirect exactly to where? The to the index. We only have one page here. All right. Cool. So let's just try to um, add somebody. So let's say I'm going to add myself. Whoops. To the Los Angeles one. Oh, what what? I want to say I made that mistake on purpose, but I actually didn't. <laughs> but it's always good for us to see these errors together. You know, how can we handle this? So let's see what they're telling us. Page not found. What did we not do? Yeah. Say it again? Yeah. yeah, so we didn't go back to our URLs.py to add this specific URL, right? So naturally, the page is not found. So if I go back to my URLs.py, let's add that. So we're going to have a path of add ninja. And then the function that we're going to call when that path is hit is add the add ninja function. 
Okay, now let's try it again. Okay, it seems like everything sort of went through, right? I mean, I didn't get any errors or anything. So if I go back to my SQLite Explorer, I can double check here in the Ninja table and see what I've got. Cool, I've got myself. And then if we go over to the right, I'll see the Dojo ID. So what that's referencing is the Los Angeles Dojo, which has an ID of one. Okay. All right. So now we actually want to display this on the page so that we can see who are all the ninjas for each dojo, because that's part of our, our wireframe here. So let me close this out. And then here, as we're, as we're looping through our dojos, we also want to have another list for each one of these guys. So I could do something like this. I could create a UL. Okay. And then inside this list, I'm going to loop through something else. Can you guys guess what we're going to loop through? For ninja and ninjas. For ninja in what? You said ninjas, but do I have a variable called ninja right now? The only variables that I really have are a couple things. I have a dojo's variable right now. I have a dojo variable, which is specific to the one that we're in in the loop. Singular, right? Okay. So we'll say dojo dot what? This is probably like the hardest part of the whole assignment. Because this isn't the dojo class. This is an actual instance oh, of the, the dojo class. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. No? Any other guesses? What was that hidden field that we added for each dojo? Remember the related name? There it is. Yeah, if you look in your models.py, we said here we wanted the related name to be so can't I use that now? It should be yeah, it should be dojo.ninjas, right? Now there's one other thing that I need to add, and this is kind of tricky. I need to add dot all. Okay. Just like we did if we were trying to get all the dojos, remember we said dojo.objects.all? I need to say dojo.ninjas.all to get all of them. All right. So then inside there, um, I think we're just going to render out the first and last name, right? Yeah. OK. So inside here, how am I going to um, output the first and last name? Double mustache. Double mustache. So let's bring this list element up here. So I'll say ninja dot first name space ninja dot last name okay and let's go back to our page and see what that's looking like okay so I've got myself in there that's cool let's add a couple of you as well I'll add Nick Aria Gata right yeah okay Select Los Angeles, submit, there he is. Let's add Daniel. Oh man, why did I all of a sudden blank on your last name? I know your last name, it's just eluding me. Robin, Robin. that's right. Ian, yes, Ian, got it. All right, LA. So that looks pretty good. Do we want to add some validations on these ninjas and make sure that they don't try to give us like blank first names or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I don't trust some of these guys. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where we're going to add our validations, we're going to start inside the models, right? 
And what we're going to do is we're going to create a Ninja Manager class. So we'll say class Ninja Manager. And then what's that going to inherit from? Models.manager. Okay, and then we're going to create a, a just a validator method. So we'll call this basic validator, which will take in self, and then it will take in some post data, which is just coming through from the form, right? All right, what do we want to check for? First name, last name. Okay, so if len of post data first name is less than one that means they gave us a blank you know blank form input we don't like that very much so let's just say uh oh I didn't create this errors dictionary we are going to need this right so just a blank or an empty errors dictionary so if this is the case I want to say errors at first name equals Please enter your first name. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate this for the. Oh, I didn't want to do it like that, so I'm just going to grab these two lines, duplicate it down. We'll change first to last. Okay, and then finally, I don't want them to select no dojo, right? Wouldn't that kind of suck if they said? Well, I don't belong to any dojo. I'm just a ninja flying by myself. That's no good. All right, so if we say if len of post data dojo ID oops, is less than one, that means that that form input was blank as well. So that's no good, right? So we'll say errors at dojo equals please enter your dojo okay and then what do I want to do at the end of this function no there's no redirecting happening in here this is just going to be a function that we're going to call later on return. I'm just going to return this errors dictionary okay Okay, so now where we're going to use this is going to be inside of our views.py. All right, so when we're adding a ninja, before we even get to this ninja.objects.create, let's, um, let's run it through our validator and see if we had any problems. Okay, so I'm going to say errors equals the result of calling the dojo.objects.basic validator. What am I going to pass to the basic validator function? So we're going to we're going to pass in the entire request.post. Okay. And then down here I'm going to ask myself does the does the errors dictionary have any key values in it? So I'm going to say if len of errors is greater than zero, so that means I had at least one error, right? I'm going to iterate through those errors and then actually add them to my messages. So I'll say for error in errors.values, okay? And every single time I hit a new error, I'm going to say messages.error I need to pass in the request, and I need to pass in what the actual error was. Okay. Notice the squiggly. What does that mean? We haven't imported messages, right? So let's go up here and import messages. I created a little snippet for this because I, I always forget where it's coming from. But that's where it comes from, django.contrib. You can import messages. So after I've added all these errors, what I want to do is I want to redirect right away, right? I don't even want to get to this part where we create a new, new ninja because they failed validation. So I'm going to say return redirect here back to the index first. 
There's one other thing I forgot to do in our models.py. I haven't yet used this Ninja Manager class yet, right? So I need to connect this to Ninja. So we come down here to the bottom of the Ninja class, and I can say objects equals a new instance of the Ninja Manager class. Oh, spell it right. Okay. So this is very important. If you guys forget to do this, you're going to run into some errors. All right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That dojo equals models form key. This form key. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is for when you say uh, delete a dojo, that would stop deleting all the ninjas part of that dojo, or that does delete all the ninjas? No, it would delete all, it all would the ninjas. Delete. Okay. Yes, it's saying like our, our deletes work in a cascading fashion. Okay. So dojo is sort of above ninjas, and when we delete one of those, it's also going to delete all the, all the things that depend on that specific dojo, okay. right? All right, so we're pretty good. Um, let's see if, if we get stopped. So if I come over here and I try to enter in some blank information, didn't I just save the file, though? What? <laughs> That's pretty odd. Manager has no attribute basic validator. Oh, I think I did I spell it wrong? just restart it. <laughs> that probably won't fix it anyway, but manager has no. All right, let me refresh that. Dojo, do oh, oh, Jesus. I'm a dummy. Not dojo, not objects. It's going to be ninja, not objects, right? Ugh. It's always good when we come across some errors together. All right. You probably will, yeah. And this way, like, you kind of know. Oh, wait a minute! I was on the wrong class. Jeez. Okay. So it looks good. Like we're not we're not creating anything extra. And if I look inside my um, my ninja table here, we should see we still have only those three, right? I wasn't able to create the. Um, the ones with blank data. Okay, so how can we display these errors to the user? So let's just drop them in the template here. So let me close out some stuff here. Up above my add a ninja form, or actually I'll just do it above both forms. I'm going to do some looping, right? So another for each Python. What we're going to do is we're going to say for error in messages. Does anybody know where messages come from? Because we didn't pass that in through the context, right? We did, but we're not importing it in the actual index.html, oh, yeah. right? So it's being provided by the Django framework. It's just, they're just automatically available to us if there are any messages. So I can just do a p tag here if I want. Whoops. Okay, and then inside there, we'll just say error. And then I can, I can give it some color if I want to. So I can just say style equals color red. All right, now let's go back. Let's try to create. Oh, I hate when it does that. Okay, that's a little more sane. Please enter your first name. Please enter your last name. Why did it not trigger the dojo one? Oh, what was the value for that? Huh. Maybe I need an or here? 
So if the length of the dojo ID was less than one, or all right, hold on one second. Let's print out post data so that we can see what it looks like. Then we would sort of know how we can fix our validation. Post data. And then I've got, I'll have my terminal open down there. Let's clear this. Okay. So post data had. Ooh. Okay, I think I made a boo boo here. <laughs> so rather than taking off the value attribute entirely, I think what we want to do is we want to say for this option, we'll say value equals blank. Because otherwise it looked like it actually, oh shoot, it looks like it actually took um, that as the value, which is sort of odd. Like why, why is it doing that? But let's try it again. Refresh the page. There we go. Okay, so now when we got our form data, you can see that our dojo ID was in fact this blank, you know, empty string, which is kind of what we were looking for, right? So now you guys can see we've completely validated. We're saying, you know, you didn't enter your first name, last name, or your dojo. So you failed all around. You're a failure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, wasn't that weird? Yeah. Why, why is that? It seems like that happens when you haven't successfully rendered a page and the errors like stack up. But then the next time I successfully rendered a page, it put everything that was in them and flushed them out. Okay. So, you, you so under, under normal circumstances, that shouldn't happen. It's only if you've gotten one of those yellow pages uh, that it seems okay. to crop up. So you just, yeah. so you just refresh the page. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. How do you feel about this? Was it like pretty good? Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Way better. Way better. Okay. Good. Any uh, any last minute questions before I stop the video? No. All right. Thank you, guys.